Dear friends, today we will talk about minerals, their utmost importance to our health, discuss some of the minerals' role, the difference between organic and inorganic forms of minerals, which ones are beneficial and which ones cause harm, and present our solution to the mineral deficiency. Nowadays, we are facing a health crisis. This health crisis, in large part, takes root in poor quality nutrition and mineral and vitamin deficiency of the modern foods. The soil is depleted due to destructive agricultural methods that strip it off its vitality and ability to nurture. Fruit and vegetables, by nature designed to be best sources of vitamins and minerals, just are not in real life anymore. Their nutritional content nowadays is a far cry from what the nutritional tables say. Growing out of worn out and damaged soil, they have hugely diminished, diminished in their nutritional value. This consequently leads to mineral and vitamin deficient consonants, us. All right, let's begin. Minerals are chemical and biochemical bonds of elements contained within matter, defining its physical and chemical qualities. Our body does not make minerals, so we have to supplement them from the external sources. Minerals are at the heart of all biochemical reactions. The stronger and more plentiful the reactions, the better the state of health. The richer the content and diversity of minerals, the more reactions take place, the better the metabolism, the stronger the immunity and overall homeostasis. The healthier the body, the happier the mind. The more the good things we can do in our life, the more we can accomplish. Well, how do we know we are mineral deficient? Some of the physical manifestations may include lack of energy, low immunity, slow digestion, dry lackluster skin, weak nails and receding hair. Also cardiovascular conditions and excess weight. Some of the mental manifestations will include anxiety and depression, unstable emotions, foggy and unfocused mind. Also the deficiency will show in the blood work. But even if the lab results do not show deficiency, you are still most likely lacking in minerals. These tests usually show the level of minerals in the bloodstream, which means they are ready for elimination from the body. And this doesn't mean that our organs and systems are properly saturated with these important compounds. Now let's look at some of the specific minerals. Magnesium is a macro element with a high vibrant potency that has an important function for the muscle tissue and neurological tissue. Organic magnesium minerals serve as a building material primarily for brain and nerves, respiratory system, bones, blood, and support many metabolic processes. Copper is the mineral that supports liver metabolism, prevents early grain. The inorganic form of copper, for example, the one that dishes are made of, can have good antibacterial effect, but will not participate in the intracellular biochemistry. But when organic, it can help with myelin production, hemoglobin and blood cell production, energy sustainability. Chromium helps insulin process the glucose, reduces appetite, regulates blood sugar. Zinc is important in testosterone production, prevents prostate cancer, boosts the immune system against viruses and bacteria, helps with hair loss. Selenium, a great antioxidant, removes heavy metals, protects the reproductive system. Minerals come in organic and inorganic form, inorganic chemical bonds and organic biochemical bonds respectively. Let's explore the myths and truths as there is a lot of misunderstanding about minerals and their quality. Inorganic minerals have no ability to react with organic matter to build and support tissues on cellular level. Therefore, they turn into sand-like substance and clog organs and blood vessels like cement. Minerals have to come to us in their organic, biochemical form, from fresh organic food, such as fruit and vegetables, and not from inorganic salts, including regular table salt, sea salt, pink Himalayan salt, and any other kind of salt. All minerals that we need to supplement for may benefit or damage. Minerals that have undergone high heat processing become indigestible and turn into salt deposits that sooner or later will cause significant harm. 
the longevity regions are associated with soft water reservoirs with low content of salts dissolved in it. There have been debates and a lot of misunderstanding about calcium and its harmful effect. But what's important to understand is that it is the inorganic form of calcium or any other element that are harmful to the well-being of humans and of course animals too. Calcium that naturally occurs in our tap water is inorganic salt dissolved in it. This inorganic chemical bond of the mineral comes from rocks, soils, seawater or any other hard water. The hardness of water is conditioned by the presence of inorganic salts such as carbonates and phosphates. Cooking and high heat exposure of food makes the minerals as well as most vitamins and other nutrients in it lose their viability. The biochemistry of these nutrients and minerals is altered, turning them into partially or fully unabsorbable and due to that harmful and toxic. However, fresh and raw vegetables contain organic minerals, those that our body needs. The full assimilation of minerals is possible under the only condition, and that is organic, ionic chemical composition. This is the design of nature, and no matter how we think of it, this is the way it works. Let's try an experiment here. Take regular tap water, not specifically filtered or distilled. Pour it into a jar, take a close look. Most likely it will be clear. Then boil it in a pot and pour it back into the jar. Within some time you might see sediment on the bottom of the jar. It is mostly inorganic calcium salts that were dissolved in the water before we boiled it. It doesn't take a specialist to understand this water is not for drinking, nor is it safe for your kidneys and blood vessels. So in fact, we are observing the physical transformation of minerals. What happens to the minerals that are contained within food if we put it through the same thermal processing? The minerals in veggies are not of different qualities and are affected the same way. They will transform from organic into inorganic form and so to say sediment within the food. Of course, we do not see it with our eyes. Soups and stews are not transparent. So now you would get the same sediment of the dead minerals, but within the food. Other than ruining minerals, the cooking process also destroys enzymes, vitamins and soluble dietary fibers, denaturizes proteins. Organic minerals are naturally evolved, viable, complex biochemical compounds. Only such structures can pass on and share the elements in the biochemical reactions within the body. Otherwise, it takes a large amount of body resources to process and get rid of the destroyed nutrients, which in itself is a very toxin-building process. The harmful effect of these inorganic salts is their accumulation in the microcracks of blood vessels, initially. The body tries to fix the problem by producing cholesterol to patch the crack, thus creating buildups and block the vessel. Connective tissue, muscle tissue and the whole body is affected. This leads to blood vessel calcifications, calcification of endocrine glands, arthritis, gallbladder and kidney stones. Same also happens when gout develops out of altered sodium salts. This concerns all living beings on earth. Humans may be different from other species in our physiological and psychological involvement, but at the level of basic organic biochemistry, we are the same. In different environments, minerals may be contained in food and water as carbonates, chlorides, phosphates and sulfates, which are not desirable. What our body prefers are citrates, gluconates, lactates, chelates, ascorbates that are organic compounds and serve the purpose and constructive physiogenesis of our body. It is more than evident, considering long-time observations and studies, that the same very minerals may exist in organic and inorganic form. On the outside they look the same, yet are completely different in their quality and biochemical activity. A great example is oxalic acid that has earned a negative reputation unfairly. If the leafy greens high in oxalic acid are processed under high temperature, the oxalic acid loses its bioactivity. Calcium also has to be organic to react, otherwise it may be harmful. 
the oxalic acid in the cooked condition in its turn can also waste the organic calcium, making it useless and toxic. All these lead to a deficit of calcium in the body. The processed oxalic acid begins to crystallize and causes damage to kidneys. On the other hand, the fresh oxalic acid in fresh juices and raw greens is essential and beneficial. Additionally, in fresh food, the organic minerals are contained within synergetic environment enriched with enzymes, vitamins, and other vibrant organic compounds. The conclusion is, no matter what people choose to believe in, the truth has its infallible way. The inorganic minerals can harm and cause damage to muscles, bones, kidneys in the form of various health conditions such as arterial plaque, gallbladder stones, contribute to deep-seated inflammatory process, pollute and destroy tissues and organs. Organic minerals are the ones that support balanced metabolism, take part in tissue production, catalyze the biochemical processes. They satisfy the physiological demands. All right, and here we get to the question where we can get the minerals from in the proper organic form. And of course from fruit and vegetables that have to come from mineral rich soils which hardly exist nowadays from supplements which is not a recommended source as most of these products are made with inorganic minerals some brands do manufacture organic form of minerals however minerals are always best in complex with other minerals mono minerals are majorly ineffective yet man-made mineral complexes can never compete with nature and here we get to the ultimate source of all minerals in nature, seaweed. This ultimate natural complex of organic minerals as if specifically designed to nurture our physiology. This is out mostly important in our times. The ocean is the accumulator and supplier of all minerals that exist. The ocean surface is larger than that of land. The average depth is about 3 miles. All the minerals from the soils get washed into the ocean, yet ocean's treasures are largely untouched, while most of land is depleted. Many cultures around the world have used seaweed in daily life for millennia. Nowadays we are faced with a choice. Say it is what it is and do nothing about the lack of minerals and continue existing and dragging through the days, exhausted and depleted. But it, it is a very destructive position. Or Ask yourself, what can I do to improve my quality life? And look for truly beneficial sources of minerals. We encourage you to go for the fresh organic produce, raw or minimally cooked food, top quality nutrients and supplements. Do your own research, educate yourself, and ultimately take charge of your own health. There are very few good quality vitamin and mineral supplements on the market. Pay attention to what you buy and take. Knowledge is power. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for other videos. In the comments below, please let us know what you would like us to talk about next. Thank you very much. Goodbye.